Hi everyone, um, today I'm going to talk about EEG, electroencephalographic headband that I've been using for about two months now, a little more. Um, the particular model that I'm testing is from a brand called Focus Band. Uh, they originally designed it mostly, I think, for golf players. Um, but what's really interesting about their technology is the ability to use it while you're moving. Most EEG, uh, usually when you use them, you have to be static or not moving. Basically because whenever we move, there's a lot of activity going on in the brain, firing, sparkling, creating a lot of electricity. And so most of the EEG are very sensitive. Therefore, whenever you start to move, it creates a lot of uh, what they call artifacts or kind of background noise and it becomes very difficult to read uh, the brain wave as far as the meditative state, the alpha, the alpha brain wave, the gamma, the delta, all the different range all spike up because you're moving. So what's interesting about the focus band is that they find a way for you to use it while moving without having too much interference of all the other part of the brain firing up for the movement side. Um, there is a wide range of level of sensitivity, uh, what they call baseline, that you can use. Uh, the lower the baseline, the easier it is to pick up uh, the brainwave when you enter a meditative state and the easier or the clearer it is to be able to move without having it uh, picking it up as you not being in a meditative state even though you're moving but it also makes it sometimes way too easy to think that you're in the right meditative state when the actual uh, state of mind you're in is too normal, I guess. To, you're still thinking a lot, but it says that you're in a more relaxed state. So it's interesting when you start to get kind of your baseline as to how your brain waves are on a day-to-day -day basis and then as you start to train be able to go deeper with a lower level of baseline to uh, really search how much of a meditative state you have but once you reach probably the 60 70 range up to 100 which is the the highest level so to speak that you can use with this headband um, movements start to be disturbing a little bit more. Um, so in some of the image that you will see, I have some image of myself practicing the Tai Chi Chi Gong Shabasha form, some image from spontaneous movement practice as well using uh, the, head, the headband. And I'll be showing you uh, one of the main app, uh, the free app that come with it. There's other app that you can use uh, that give you different kind of readings. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail about them at this point. What's interesting about the focus band or, is that you have these three um, sensor, so that are pretty big, and I'm guessing that's part of why it makes it um, easier to pick up the right frequency even though you're moving. Uh, it's very soft material, it's comfortable to wear. Uh, you just have to be careful not to tie it up too much, especially if you reach the level of cranial sacral qigong where your bones of your cranium are opening and closing a little more because then it gets a little tight after a bit. So the, the headband in itself is very comfortable to wear even when you're moving. It's sit tight to the forehead so even when you have your hands around there's nothing sticking out. There's no wire that you could um, feel or anything. It's um, it's a Bluetooth connection with your cell phone or iPad or any other uh, mobile device. I believe Focus Band works better with iPhone iPads than Androids. They do have Android version now, but I think there's some of their uh, apps that are limited only for uh, iOS. The reason I decided to try Focus Band and, and start to use it is to see how good of a tool it can be to help my students uh, have a bit of a neurofeedback external support as they're doing their own Qigong practice and also to use it um, 
as a, a external, a little bit more objective device to see how you're evolving in your Qigong training. Um, I have to mention that the goal of Qigong is not doing exercise of Qigong for a set period of time, but is to develop the general perception of Qi within your body and the meditative state as you're going about your general day. So as you're doing throughout your day that you're able to maintain that state, you train it for a certain period of time, but then you maintain it throughout the day afterwards. And so this device allows us to monitor and observe how quickly you can get into a meditative state, how uh, deep that meditative state can be and see if you can maintain it from going from a seated posture into a standing posture into a moving exercise and still retain that level of meditation. That's what is so great about Qigong compared to a sitting type of meditation exercise um, is that often people learn to meditate seated but as soon as they're done they get up and right away their minds start to chit chatter and they get out of it. Whereas practicing Qigong you learn to enter that state of meditation while you're moving. Therefore it's a lot easier to transpose that state into what you do in your everyday life whether it's you know, cooking, washing the dishes, cleaning, walking around, being at work, uh, just sitting in front of a camera and chit-chatting, trying to be able to feel that sensation of chi, even though your mind is busy doing something else. And I could say that it's actually even easier <laughs> to be talking into a camera while you're feeling the chi, because it helps your nervous system calm down and don't feel so stressed about it. <laughs> so, as you start to use this tool and practice with it, it gives you a little bit of idea of how well you're doing until you actually start to really feel the sensation of chi in your body. Um, biofeedback, neurofeedback tools are all interesting tools to get used to training yourself to be in that state. But if you rely too much on those tools to know it, you kind of miss the point. Tools are there to help us do things better, faster, but once we're able to do them, if we don't need those tools, it's even better. And so that's why in Qigong, we have the different sensation that start to manifest when Qi arise. We have the internal feeling that starts to grow that help us to know how, our, how is our posture? Is our posture the best aligned we possibly can in that day or can we improve it by feeling the flow of chi in it even better? By feeling the sensation in our hands better at first and then feeling that through our whole body. Getting into observing these sensation as we're moving is a sign that our mind is also getting into a deeper state of meditation. Observing our mind whether we practice it from simply a seated posture, a type of shengong where we quiet the mind and just enter into that quiet state, can we transpose this as we start to move and maintain that tranquility state as we're doing things? So because at first it requires a longer period of time to cultivate these skills and be able to apply them, using a device like this for a beginner can give them a little bit more support and encouragement in order to continue and go deeper into their practice even though they haven't quite developed the sensation of chi for themselves just yet. And so as they see an improvement from an external perspective, it would kind of give you the incentive to continue training and until you actually start to feel it better for yourself. And then once you have some feeling at first, it's a good way also to verify, is it the right feeling? Am I entering the right state of meditation that I want to when I have that feeling? Or am I imagining the sensation and creating in myself? So, yeah, I guess it's an interesting device. Um, I would be very interested to see if other people get it and start to train on it uh, to see what kind of results they're getting. And so maybe create a group of five or ten people 
uh, working exchangings together who would be interested to use this device and then compare notes together uh, and with our student as well in order to see if it would be interesting to pursue deeper research. If you're interested in trying it and you have you know, a little bit of extra change, maybe $500 US that's lying around and you want to invest it in a focus band and participate and do some exchange, uh, let me know. It would be nice to, to come about a good way to use it, uh, find ways how we can integrate that tool for Qigong training and help people to have a um, better aspect. There's other metrics that we can use, heart rate variability, um, beat per minutes for the heart rate, uh, that are interesting data to have to build a little bit of a, a general bank of information of what kind of data can be used to help support and bring Qigong into a more scientific uh, aspect of it. And nowadays, thanks to, thanks to newer technology, it's so easy to do. We have EEG device that we can use with our cell phone. It's not the same as a fifteen or $20,000 device, but it gives us some good input at first. I personally believe that uh, the kind of data we can get from it should help with increasing certain type of results in the training itself for certain type of students, maybe not everyone, but it's a very interesting tool to have at hand and to see how we can use it to further our Qigong training and mostly help our students improve their, uh, their own training and their quality. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comment what you think, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not familiar with the channel yet, and welcome. So, have a good day. See you guys soon.